I have been developing games since 2017, and one of the topics that always piques my interest is procedurally generated content. Now, procedurally generated content, or PCG for short, is an amazing way to randomize outcomes or situations in a game. I'm an extremely lazy designer in that I find it so tedious having to create levels or designs for maps, and PCG allows you to generate algorithms which will do it for you. So, for the last few weeks, I have been designing a tower defense game. And don't worry, a devlog will be coming out for that shortly. And when I look at tower defense games on uh, tutorials on YouTube, the most common thing that I saw was that you have to create your own maps. Now, of course, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. You have full control of the outcomes and the designs, but I love the idea of things being randomized. For the main reason being, there is so much replayability in the game as no two games will ever really be the same due to the maps being different. So, in today's video, I will be showing you how to generate a path design like this from the existing map that we created in the first video, which if you haven't watched yet, I'll leave the link to it below. So, watch part one before you jump into here. Alright guys, welcome in. So, you can see in the background here, we have the path getting generated. Now I understand it does look a little bit funky at the moment and I will go over why that is in just a second and how we can fix that. Um, but just to begin with, this is the path that gets generated. I can see it's you know very randomized and it's sort of a cool sort of designs each time. So first off, I'll just quickly explain how the algorithm works. Um, and. Uh, what I'll do as well, actually, I'll include a link to the project file um, through GitHub at the bottom here. And all you'll need to do is if you don't have GitHub, you don't need to actually take it or anything. You can just go assets here. So it's in our isometric path generator. You'll get a link straight to this page here. Go assets, sprites, oh, sorry, not sprites, scripts and the map generator. And what you can do is you can actually just copy the entire class here from be below the uh, first curly bracket here, all the way to above the bottom curly bracket there. And we can copy that inside of our script here. Oh, geez. Um, so yeah, just override whatever you want. Um, just so I don't have to explain every single piece of code, I'm just going to explain sort of how it works instead. Um, and if you guys have questions about it, leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to assist you. So make sure, yeah, you've copied this over. Otherwise, if you do have a GitHub account, then you can also click code here, copy the HTTPS link here, open up GitHub desktop and inside file, do clone repository, and just include the link here. Now I've already got a file under this name here in my desktop. So you, you know, you, you obviously won't have that to begin with. Just save it as your own version. Then inside of Unity Hub, you'll click add project from disk, find the path generator, and you can just click add project and it'll open it straight back up. Okay, then you'll have a link to this <clears throat> and I'll quickly show you inside of Asprite how the algorithm works. So first off, it's going to check. Uh, so obviously this is not a isometric sort of design just to begin with. It functionally works the exact same as a top-down um, map though. So it's going to choose a position at the top here. Let's say it chooses this one here. That's our starting position. And it's going to, uh, there's a couple like sort of edge cases it checks, um, make sure that pieces are valid and that movements are valid. So we'll go down here, let's say it goes down here again. It's going to choose sort of directions to change um, depending on the uh, value here, which is our current count. And what the, the current count does is it makes sure that every position that it's going to, um, it's not just a straight line. Because we want it to have a bit of variation so we have like a, a minimum and a maximum. Um, and in this case, I've set it to be three. You guys can change that value to whatever you'd like. The current count um, gets updated inside of the choose direction method. 
and you can change that value to whatever you want. I found three worked sort of the nicest. <clears throat> but what it does, yeah. So we are choosing a position to go to, let's say it goes here, it goes here. We wanna make sure that at any time that the next position that it goes to is a possible position. And there's a few sort of like reasons it wouldn't be possible. Let's say it goes here. If it wants to go here, obviously that's out of bounds of the map. Now another reason that it could be impossible is if it goes down, 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 let's say it goes right. Um, and then it goes up, let's say. Okay, now if it goes up, then it can't go left here. This is a impossible piece. It's already an existing tile. Um, but let's say it goes, instead of up, it goes down here. Um, now it goes up from the down position here. It knows it can't continue up because this position is invalid and this position is invalid. So it knows that it's limited to going left. And sometimes uh, whenever it goes up, it actually forces it to go in the previous direction that it was going. So in this case here, it is moving up. It'll always move the next like sort of direction change will always have to be the previous direction that it was going in. So this one's right, the next one it'll always be right. So you'll never see a case where it loops like this inside of a swirly sort of position. And that's just because in a case like this, it does limit it quite a lot. <clears throat> so the algorithm will continue and it's going to basically generate the map as it like, you know, in a, in a very sort of yeah, randomized way, as you can see here. Um, the next thing is, is our path here, okay? Um, by default, when you open up the project, you'll be given like an empty scene to begin with. Go inside the scenes folder and load up the sample scene. Uh, and make sure the map generator is completely defined here. Um, I've set it to be 20 by 20, that we've got a empty tile reference and that all of these uh, sprites, sprite references, are populated as well. And I'll explain how I've defined them. Um, when I say down path, this here is down. So I guess like, yeah, let's think about it in our 2D uh, sort of top down grid here. Down is this way right this way, left this way, and up is this way, right? But because it's isometric, it's essentially the entire thing just flipped um, 45 degrees. So in this case here, this is down, this is left or right, it can be either, just like this one could be left, uh, sorry, down or up. They're the same tiles that will serve the same function. This one here is down left or right up. This one here is down right or again left up. This one here would be right down. Again, it could also be up left. And this one would be left down. And so that's how I've named it here inside of the um, references for the sprites, the empty tile, which would just be this one. This is our empty tile. It can be either down path left, right, left, down, right, down, down, left, or down, right. Um, so yeah, that's how I've defined it. <clears throat> okay, finally, the sort of confusing reasoning that these are overlapping, and it's, it is to do with uh, Unity's sort of uh, sorting layers but there's actually like a way to do this without having to, you know, mess around with any numbers here or anything. You see, we've got this one here. We don't want that. Um, and a way to fix that is actually to make sure that inside of whatever we're creating our sprites in, so let's say a sprite, we are saving them in the same um, PNG file. So I know that seems a bit strange, but as long as these here are all in the same PNG file, so I'll export this now 
and I'll copy it as the same name. So I'll just override it. Okay. So then we open this up. Okay, click apply here. So now we've got everything in the same path here. What we're gonna do is um, just ensure that each position is, and I'm gonna to make sure I do this correctly. Left, down, right, down, down, left, and down, left, and wait, I had that right, I think, down, left, down, right. Okay, now, because they're all within the same file, um, it, it'll actually, yeah, it'll just work. It's gonna do its, uh, it's gonna update the file, uh, the tile positions accurately. So you can see now we have removed the strange uh, sort of overlap that was happening before. So yeah, you can just mess around with that. I have included as well um, inside of the script that it is generating every time you press space. Um, and it can bug out if you keep clicking space like before the path generation completes. So you can see sometimes, yeah, see, we've got like a bit of an error there. Sometimes, yeah, the map doesn't get fully generated properly. Just let the map generate first before you press space. Um, yeah, and have fun with it. If you guys have any questions sort of regarding this algorithm, how it works, any sort of niches or anything like that, or even just like improvements that you guys think you can make with it, suggestions for where I can take it, do let me know. Like I'd be more than happy to, you know, take any suggestions on board. But otherwise I hope that this very quick video is somewhat easy to understand. I know that the algorithm is a little bit chunky. I've tried recording this a couple times. Um, each time trying to write it out myself, but I really don't think it's going to help me just typing it out. It will just help to, you know, copy the entire script into your own file. And, you know, you can mess around with it as you like, read it, try and understand each method and everything. Um, and just refer back to what I said, the order of sort of like how it works is. Um, but yeah, if you guys had any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care.